The Story of Jesus the Storyteller Illustrated by Fran Thatcher Like all good teachers, Jesus was a great storyteller. He used stories to explain God's message to his disciples and to the crowds of people who came to hear him. One day, when Jesus was teaching, a clever teacher of the Jewish law began to ask some awkward questions. He hoped Jesus would make a mistake. Tell me, said the teacher, how can I get to heaven and live forever? You know the scriptures as well as I do, replied Jesus. What do they say about it? They tell me to love God with all of my heart and soul and to love other people as, as I love myself, the teacher answered, quick as a flash. Exactly, replied Jesus. It's as simple as that. But, went on the teacher, who are the people I should love? Jesus answered him by telling a story. There was once a man who was traveling along the road from Jerusalem to Jer Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They beat him up and stole his money. Then they ran off, leaving him half dead by the roadside. Not long afterward, a priest came along. He saw the injured man covered in blood. There must be robbers about, he said to himself. I'd better get out of here. Then he crossed the other side of the road and hurried off. Soon he was out of sight. A little later, a Levite came walking by. His job was helping the priests in the temple, and he was busy thinking about everything he had to do that day. He saw the injured man and went over to look. I'm in a hurry, he thought to himself. I just don't have time to get involved with this problem. Anyway, the man is probably dead, and for all I know, the robbers may still be nearby. They may decide to attack me, too. And the Levite hurried off without a backward look. It was afternoon before anyone else came past. This was a man from Samaria, a region whose citizens did not worship God in the same way as the Jewish people. The Samaritans were hated by many Jews. As soon as the Samaritan saw the injured man, he hurried over. The Samaritan then gently dragged the man into the shade of a tree and cleaned his wound with wine. He rubbed oil into the man's bruises and tore up his clo own clothes to make bandages. The Samaritan lifted the injured man on his own donkey and took him to the nearest inn. He sat up with the patient all night nursing him. The following morning, the traveler was much better. The Samaritan went to the innkeeper. I want you to look after this man, the Samaritan said. Here are two silver coins. If you need to spend more than this before it is well enough to leave, I will pay you back when I pass by here again next week. Now, said Jesus, you tell me which of these three men treated the injured man most lovingly. I suppose it was the Samaritan, replied the teacher grudgingly. He was annoyed by the story. He did not like having to admit that an enemy of the Jews might treat a stranger better than a Jewish priest or a Levite would. That Samaritan showed real love, said Jesus. He didn't worry about whether the injured man was a Samaritan or a Jew. He didn't worry that looking after the injured man would prevent him from doing whatever it was he himself planned to do. He saw someone who needed help and helped him. Now you go off and behave in the same way. On another occasion, Jesus told a story to some priests to explain how God has a place for everyone, even those who have done wrong. There was once a farmer who had two sons. The younger son was tired of working on the land, so he went to his father. Father, he said, I don't want to wait till you die to get my share of your fortune. Will you give it to me now? His father made no comment. He just gave his son a large bag of money. The young man left home. He went to another country and had a wild time enjoying himself. Soon he had spent all his money. His friends abandoned him. Then a sev severe famine hit the country, and the only job the young man could get was working after pigs. Looking after pigs. Sometimes he was so hungry that he ate pig food. Eventually he came to his senses. I am starving, he said to himself. I will go home and tell my father how foolish I have been. I will beg his forgiveness and ask him to give me work on his farm again. The farmer saw his younger son in the distance and ran to welcome him. He threw his arms around him. My son is home, the farmer cried excitedly to his servants. Go and fetch my best robe and some new sandals. We're going to have a feast. Then he pushed a ring onto his son's finger. He refused to listen to his son's apologies and instead sat him in the most important seat. 
When the older brother came home from the fields and found out what was going on, he was furious. I have stayed loyally by your side working like a slave day and night, he protested to his father, and you have given me no reward. Now your good-for-nothing son turns up having spent all your money and you hold a feast for him? It's not fair. The farmer was sorry his son was so jealous and reminded him, everything I have will be yours one day, but I thought your brother was dead. Isn't his safe return a season to celebrate? God would want you to be happy and forgive your brothers as I have done. These and other stories helped people understand what trusting God really means and how they should live their lives.